started out not a lot different from any other painfully liberal, post-collegiate, anti-establishment artistic event. Someone taking my coat and throwing it on a pile in an unseen room somewhere. A lot of wine, a few beers. Everyone is so entitled, liberal enough to be aware of their entitlement, educated enough to know that it's merely circumstance, sophisticated enough to know it and not be apologetic. They're all white. They can't help it. Everyone here is white, except that very attractive black man across the room who, for the rest of the evening, won't meet my eyes because I might think he's a sat, shallow, sellout fool to be here unless he won't meet my eyes because he knows I'm a fool. After a half hour or so of aimless mingling random amenities, I'm ready to settle down. And in a dark, untraveled corner of the room, I found a place, a circle of not yet drunk women. Here in this group, I found solidarity. We can talk about periods and sex and feminism and art. I sit among these women, mostly listening, as they trade stories about nightmare internships and graduation trips to Prague, my mind begins to wander to the tray of pita chips and hummus at the other end of the coffee table. Would it be rude to reach across and grab a few? I'm jolted from my growing hunger when I hear my name. Emma, you really should travel. Nothing makes the world more smaller and more accessible than seeing it. Every artist should. I went to Padova, Italy last year. I was completely and utterly elated to experience a new culture and society. I was ready for my first real Italian pizza, my first bite of gelato, my first risotto. I, I couldn't wait to be fluent in Italian and converse with the people I met on the street. It was going to be glorious. But not long after my anxiously anticipated arrival, homesickness and culture shock set in. My roommate, Laura, and I both felt terrified and intimidated by the unfamiliar world that lay beyond our host family's doors. At first, it appeared that Laura and I were nothing alike. She was a white girl from Philadelphia who loved to cook and clean and be merry even before her first cup of coffee, which annoyed and baffled me to no end. I was the slightly cynical black girl, repulsed by anything and everything domestic. Yet we soon found that we had much more in common than we could ever imagine. We instantly became closer than sisters. We clung to each other for support and a sense of home. After a month of avoiding social interactions with any and all Italians, except for our unavoidable and disarmingly warm host family, we became home for each other our host brother. Soon enough, we were ready to make baby steps into the outside world, but only together. And our host brother invited us out, and we met people who, to our surprise, were not horrified or insulted by our inability to speak Italian, our shyness, or lack of social grace. They accepted us, welcomed us, and genuinely seemed to like us. We were overjoyed. From then on, we frequented the piaz, drank spritz after spritz, danced in nightclubs, and spoke easily with the locals. We finally felt at home, and not just with each other, but with our surroundings. Italy was beautiful. Everything around me was beauty. The buildings, the food, the people, all seemed to possess a comforting sense of ease and grace. In Italia, one could just be. One could sit in a restaurant for hours after finishing a meal, just talking and enjoying the company of friends and family and strangers alike. Older couples strolled hand in hand through the squares and the city side streets. Middle-aged couples played with their children in parks and entire families absorbing the spring afternoons. Young people, college and high school students, lounged on the grass of the large open area called the Prato de la Vela. They played frisbee, strummed guitars, practiced impressive feats of fire throwing and jungling and tumbling. Something was always happening, but no one was rushed, hurried, or weighed down by the stress of what had not been accomplished, what was to be accomplished next. I mean, 
Even the air felt freer, more relaxed. My romantic notions of the beautiful country I waited so long to visit were true. And some days I would wake up amazed and thankful that I existed in such a wonderful place. There was the occasional beggar woman that I felt guilty for not being able to help, a condescending or obnoxious waiter, an overly aggressive Moroccan vendor shoving cheap knockoff purses in our faces, and yes, there was always the overly aggressive men who wanted to sleep with the young, exotic beauty. Me. At home, at home I was always different, but certainly nothing special, more strange than exotic. In Italy, however, I was the black beauty, the princess, a goddess. I suppose they viewed me the same way American men view the sand-covered Brazilian models languidly splayed in the Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. Admittedly, I enjoyed this new and unexpected attention. It was heady, sometimes frustrating and always new, fending off the well-dressed suitors, not entirely intentioned ones. My roommate and I had a group of close friends comfortable, intellectually inspiring, and as interested in us as we were in them. And for the first time, I got laid. But it, it was better than that. It, it was better than that. You know, I never felt so appreciated for my mind and body by, by anyone before. We had an entire social network, romantic attachments, and a million and one things to still do and see. So we stayed. The beginning of the summer was marked with a period of disappointment as we realized that our new friends had lives, jobs, families, and schoolwork to attend to. Now that we had almost nothing to do but teach English to small children, we found ourselves, well, tired of looking at ourselves, even in this grand context. Eventually, we took it upon ourselves to explore the rest of Italy together. We visited the historical sites of Ferrara, went shopping in Bologna, and vacationed on the beaches of Rimini and Sicily. We found a new balance for our summer lives, and we were happy. When I left Italy for school, I was more than sad. I was leaving the first place that had accepted me, without question, without qualification or explanation. Emma, Emma. You have to see Europe. It will change your life. Yeah, sounds great. Maybe I will someday. Thank you.